Hey, welcome everyone back to the Dusty Wheel. If you've never been with us before, this is our live call-in talk show all about the Wheel of Time on YouTube. Every once in a while we do a different series, but not tonight. Tonight, if this is the first time you've joined us, you've joined us for our roundtable discussion. It was going to be this discussion where we had our little Wheel of Game Time, where we'd spin the wheel and talk about kind of various, whatever, random topics, until this past week happened, <laughs> which I'm sure most of you or maybe just some of you have been watching all the news coming out about the Wheel of Time show, and that kind of changed the direction. All of a sudden, this idea all about the episode titles and what they mean mattered a lot more. So we've been dying to do this episode for a long time, but now we just have a ton of information to speculate about. So if you joined us tonight, it's all about episode titles, what they mean, and we can't wait to see what you have to say in chat. And at some point during the show, it will probably be 20, 30 minutes in, We'll open the call lines because this is a live call-in show and we'll let you give us a call, kind of react to the things we're saying, give your opinion about the news you've heard and uh, get a chance to talk to our panels, panelists. And for that, uh, let's bring our esteemed guests into the show. Welcome to the three of you. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Hey, uh, at the top here, if you're watching on, we have Joe from Takaran Riyadh. Uh, it's a Wheel of Time showcast. It's a, this podcast is awesome. Uh, they focus on the show. Uh, he, he and his friends, Jen and Tom. Is that correct, Joe? Yes, it is. And they talk about the Wheel of Time. They're a lot of fun to listen to, especially this most recent episode. I, I really enjoyed because of just how insane Tom got. Uh, so if you want to follow <laughs> them, I think in, look in the description on YouTube, uh, you can see a link to their show. They're amazing. Go give them a follow. Follow them on Twitter. It's a lot of fun just to get into the conversation. And now, then we have Aubrey. Aubrey Pham. How are you doing, Aubrey? Hi, I'm good, Matt. How are you? <laughs> Great. Uh, Aubrey is a good friend of mine, married to Damon Dredd, if like literally, um, and uh, happens to be on the board of directors for Jordan Con, and also a contributor on tour.com and she she knows her what uh, and that's why she's here uh, beyond just being a great friend of mine and then last but not least rebecca from reading the pattern rebecca how you doing great how are you guys great 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 uh, <laughs> if you haven't watched rebecca's show uh she does reread breakdowns of of the wheel of time along with uh most recently been covering the show content really well kind of gives some her unique opinions and she's been, uh, she's been watching our show for a little bit here, and I was like, we've got to get Rebecca on. So I'm grateful to have all three of you here talking about episode titles. But before we get going too deep into those titles, I want to cover and kind of get a base foundation for everyone listening and watching. What's the new stuff we've heard? What are some of the old things that would all be relevant to whatever we speculate about? So let's begin with what I'll say is uh, fact number one. Let's put it up on the screen. So uh, when Rafe was talking about how the show was going to begin, he definitely mentioned that we're going to get in that first episode one of the iconic scenes with Tam and Rand. Now, if you look at screen number two, along this line, Rafe also talks about that we're going to have uh, Pat and Fane is actually going to be in the first shot of the show. So I, I, I wanted to cover these two facts just to kind of remind ourselves, we are beginning where the books begin. So number three, let's see number three up here. So Narg posted this a while back and I thought this was an interesting uh, you know, comment from Rafe that I thought was relevant. The question is, what do you think will have to hit the cutting room floor from the eye of the world in transitioning from book from show? Uh, as a follow-up, could those things reemerge at a natural point later? Rafe said, this is a WAFO, which I think he means watch and find out, but there are already aspects of the Eye of the World that I plan to use in different seasons. So let's keep that in mind, panelists, as we begin here. Next one. So Rafe talked about um, uh, the, the actor who's going to play Loghain, and I brought this in just to remind us that Rafe intends to bring Loghain you know, uh, give him a larger role in this series. So that has to come to play. He's been announced. He's definitely going to be in season one. I expect to hear us kind of talking about how that's going to play out. Let's go to the next one. So uh, this piece was a, recently um, Geek Eerie, or Geeky Eerie. I probably pronounced that terribly. Uh, she's she's awesome. He's awesome. I can't remember. Uh, uh, she they posted about the fact that uh, Kate Fleetwood, who happens to be um, Leandrin, who was just recently announced, was out uh, or posted a picture of Prague on November 18th after the Daryl McCormick casting on November 12th. And then also Maria Kennedy 
posted pictures of Prague in November 22nd and 27th. Uh, Maria Kennedy happens to be someone that's just been recently announced as part of the show in episode five. That was an awesome find. Uh, uh, and so now we have this idea that maybe Leandrin and Maria were out there already shooting and possibly in earlier episodes than just episode five. So we need to take that into account. Let's go to the next one. Uh, uh, this this piece is just one of those, we are going to get a Tom scene. I thought it was a lot of fun to just remind ourselves um, the fact that he watched a Gleeman's performance. We know we have Tom in the series uh, and what role he's going to play. And are we going to end up at the White Bridge scene? You know, how far are we going to go? Let's see what the next one is. And this is from our good old Narg. Uh, when it comes to getting pictures of the Tinkers, uh, we have to take into account that there's a possibility here. These could be random pictures of people that might be dressed in something that looks like a Tinker. Uh, or it could be something, something real here. So we have to take into account that Tinkers may be in there. And does that mean that we have to gear ourselves towards uh, you know, uh, that scene in the eye of the world? Let's see what else we have, Taylor. This one is really important because Brandon brought up the fact that, uh, you know, as he was at the set and he, you know, he thought there might be some changes that, you know, that, what does he say here? He uh, says, I've liked the scripts too, though there are changing some things from the books. Some, see, some changes I agree with 100%, some I find a little bit more uncertain. Uh, this is important because uh, this actual picture that Brandon posted happened to come with some metadata on it that told us in episode two, we're gonna hit Terran Ferry. So again, part of the conversation tonight. Let's see what else we got, Taylor. So uh, this is important when it comes to Daryl McCormack, we don't know who he's playing in the show. Well, we do know that he has a three season or three episode arc as far as it's been reported. We know he was at, and if correct me wrong panelist, I think that was episode 105 that he has in his hand. I can't remember if it was 105, 106, uh, but well, he is, that, was it, that one's 105. five, so. It's yeah. 105. And mm -hmm. he was definitely, uh, as far as we know, announced a lot earlier, and it suggests to me that he's in one, maybe two of the first uh, four episodes before that, or maybe we'll you know find out that there's another episode after this and just he's only one. But we need to keep that in mind also. Well, Next keep one. in mind that TV shows don't always shoot in order. Yeah, yeah. exactly, and Absolutely. that's something we also are going to call call out here. Uh, and then we just got Peter Franzen uh, mentioned up in the upper right of this picture that you're seeing here. And then uh, you have Kate in the bottom right and you have Maria in the bottom left. And obviously, you know, we have Madeline in the upper left of this picture. This is important because Peter Franzen was just announced. Like, I, I swear it was like two hours ago uh, or something like that. I don't know. Like they, they pushed this out and and no one had knew that he was part of the show. And he's from Vikings fame and he's probably... I don't know him that well, but he's probably from a lot of other shows, but uh, you'll, you probably recognize him from the Vikings. But it, this is to say we're getting a lot of new faces and they're gonna, have, they're gonna be playing specific roles that maybe we can kind of fit in as we go here. Do we have anything else? Oh yeah, this one's a lot of fun. So Jennifer Garcia happens to have, uh, on January 21st, showed us that she is part of, she's an Aes Sedai, and obviously she put the little blue mark, although when I went to her page recently, that was changed, or maybe I just couldn't see it on my Ooh. computer, but is, I said I was spelled correctly and I didn't see the blue. But uh, we see that she has blue there and we see an episode 105, I believe. But if you notice, we also have a picture from her uh, Instagram back in December and she just happens to be holding in her right hand a copy of New Spring. That is relevant to us and we need to kind of bring that up in our conversation. Okay, let's see the next one. Oh, and this one's a lot of fun <laughs> from Narg. Again, uh, I, you know, uh, our wonderful Narg, I don't know if you can take these as fact or we're just going to go with rumor at this point, but he says the extras casting agency in Prague that cast for Wheel of Time is looking for a puppeteer, which has some fun connotations that we can kind of go through and thoughts on, thoughts on that scene. And they're also looking for five female extras for a nude scene in a steam room Turkish bath house to film with a main actress also a barber to shave someone so <laughs> whatever well i want i want you guys to bring that one into play in, as we speculate here and what else do we got oh i think this is our last one so this was a lot of fun also from geeky Eerie. uh and this one was awesome and really appreciate geeky Eerie for spending time tracking all this stuff down this is the this is peak hardcore fan freak by the way and i love it because <laughs> because it speaks to my heart she, uh, Geeky Eye wrote, uh, actress Kate Franz, who commented on Taylor Napier's Instagram. By the way, Taylor Napier is one of um, Alana Mosfani's, or I guess, uh, yeah, uh, the actress who's playing Alana Mosfani, her 
one of her warders. Uh, Taylor Napier's Instagram post that she'd, be, she'd been on set in January, left for Prague on Sunday, along with fellow actor Joe Layton. He, it could be coincidence since Joe was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but he's following three people associated with the show on Twitter. Awesome stuff from our fellow geeks online. So those are the kind of fun rumors. Did I miss anything, panel? Was there anything that you think is relevant to the discussion we're about to have as far as either rumors, uh, speculation you've seen from Narg or from others like Iki Yeri? Um, or was, or is that, does that cover everything that, we, that would be relevant we know to date? There's one I think that is um, kind of big. It's, it's a rumor, uh, I would put it in that category because it doesn't seem official, but when the casting for Todd and Fane and um, the other actors who were announced at the same time was reported in Deadline, they said that Fane was cast for one episode in the first season. Um, so I don't know if that's, that's, I would still say that's a rumor, but Deadline also had the exclusive on the Alana casting. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, something that's that is something to consider. That is, yeah, I think we should keep that. Uh, Redonian Intelligence is also another website. They posted something where they found <laughs> some screenshot of some production schedule saying there are eight episodes of this first yeah. season. That's right. unconfirmed, but it's yeah. something we should also keep in mind. And that is where I think we're going to target this conversation to, which is the assumption we're going to have eight episodes. Uh, yeah. Was it, oh, and there is this last note, which is that new spring uh, that we brought up with Jennifer Garcia. Um, an actress named Claire Perkins uh, also mm -hmm. happened to post something about being on set. Uh, and we, we were able to tie, I, I'm trying to remember if it was Narg. It was, it was one of the it many was, uh, 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 it who actually found it. Yeah. It was wattseries.com. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, wattseries.com. Thank you, uh, Joe. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah, they, they mentioned that uh, on her agency's CV for her, she's going to play and correct, say the name. I, you have it, Aubrey, and I in my head I don't have her name, but it's it's a uh, which one? Nagashi. What's her first oh. name? Oh, Kareen. Kareen. Sorry, I couldn't no, come no. up with a Kareen no, Nagashi. Kareen. And she mm -hmm. happens to be from New Spring, the novel. Mm -hmm. uh, happened to be, uh, I think it's Blue Aja. Uh, who? Green. She's green. Sorry, Tamra. Blue. That's right. Tamra sends. <laughs> I keep my thinking of Tamra's blue. Tamra sends Moraine to bring her a note, and she's eventually subsequently killed uh, in that book. Sorry, spoilers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reminder, tonight there will be spoilers. Uh, yeah. Sorry, that happened. Uh, if you haven't read New Spring, the novel, I don't think it's a huge surprise and it won't, you know, spoil too much. Okay, there we go. Table set. Uh, let's jump into it, the three of you. I will try to speak less and hear from you more here. The, uh, the title of episode one is called Leave Takings. Or sorry, Leave Taking. How on the nose do you believe this is going to be, Joe? Uh, leave taking. What is this saying to you? What's what's your speculation about what we're going to get in episode I, one? I think this is. Thanks for the easy one, there, Matt. Uh, yeah. I, think <laughs> is, I think this is just cut and dry. Um, I think recently I started. Th I had assumed that this was going to end with them leaving Emmons Field. That was going to be the end of the episode. But now, after seeing all these new episode titles come out and thinking that they're going to be going much farther into the series. I'm kind of curious as to how far into um, the uh, eye of the world they're going to go with this episode. Like, is this just going to be them leaving him in the field? Are they going to go all the way up to Taron Ferry? Because um, we know that that was part of the early shooting. So that, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I feel like we have to only get to, yeah, we can't go, we can go as far as Taron Ferry, I think for sure. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's, th that's a legitimate way. What are you going to say, Aubrey? I was going to say, I think we end with sinking the ferry. And yep. they're really, 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 truly out of the two rivers. So you think we're going to get the sinking of it? So with the mm -hmm. Brandon's uh, Brandon's image, the metadata said episode mm -hmm. two with Taryn mm -hmm. Ferry. So, the, oh. but let's say let's say it's only up to let's say Taryn yeah. Ferry is our mark, and that's mm -hmm. we we can't go any further than that. Right. What else? Uh, and maybe Rebecca, I'll throw this question to you. Mm -hmm. What else can leave taking? Let's say it's not only on the nose to the chapter yeah. title from the Eye of the World, which I think is chapter nine. Uh, what else could leave taking symbolize? You know, is there any, do you have any speculation re around what else they might be trying to tell us is going to happen? My main speculation just has to do with like what other big things that are happening around the world would we want to be checking in on throughout the season that aren't just yeah. our core group? Um, I mean, and to, to me, I mean, obviously we have Loghain, so yeah, and that's going to be expanded. So we could be checking in on him at any point in any episode. Just we, we hear about him. He's off screen. We never see it, but we could be seeing that in any episode. So that's a big one. Yeah. And then 
this might just be a little bit of my personal preference, but I, I could see also checking in with what's happening in Camelin. And there's a lot of characters that are in Camelin or could potentially be in Camelin that we could be sort of following that as another thread throughout the season. Yeah, I kind of wondered from a journeying perspective, you know, uh, you know, I wondered if maybe we'd see a contingent of individuals leave Tarvalon, uh, yeah. you know, to awesome. to make their way out to, you know, take on Loghain, mm -hmm. or if we'll see somebody up in Faldara, you know, I can, I can imagine the army, you know, I can imagine that we get some rumblings, and that that's not such a sudden thing of like, why are we up in Faldara? I can imagine, mm. you know, that the, the army is gathering to because they, they, they recognize something's coming out of Shallow Goal and the Blight. So uh, that's, that's where it kind of hit me. I was like, maybe leave taking is going to give us other parties, other mm -hmm. groups that are making their way. And that's how they're gonna introduce us to this being a much larger world. So uh, is there anybody else that kind of, you know, when it comes to leave taking, is something you wanna highlight that you think speculatively might happen different than the books, I guess, from our, our core group leaving yeah, Edmonds Field? I would be surprised if we were anywhere outside of Emmons Field in episode one. I think they've got a lot to introduce. And I think there's a lot of big things that happen really quick, especially with regard to Winter Night. Yeah. Um, and I think that it gives them the opportunity to expand the role of some of the side characters in Emmons Field, um, which I, I, I fully believe they intend to do. Um, most especially because if we go all the way to what, what the material in book four, when folks are coming back to Emmons Field and some pretty significant stuff happens. I don't know how far you want me to get into spoilers or avoid. You, um, you can but spoil there are some... You can spoil okay. And for everyone that's watching, uh, there will be spoilers possibly to the end of the book. Okay. We'll try to avoid any huge spoilers, but at least for the first okay. couple of books are gonna be spoiled, so. Okay, yeah. so I, I'll try and avoid, other than to say there are some major character losses back in Emmons Field that happen <laughs> uh, in book four that would have much more of an emotional impact in the show if we had better introductions to those characters and spend a little bit more yeah. time with those characters and thinking. <clears throat> I mean, I, that's that's going to be the complaint this entire episode as we talk, which is which is this question: How much can we get to know individuals if we happen to be going to the Great Hunt by episode five? But we don't know that that's what we're going to be right. here as a panel, and we'll see what those in the chat have to say about that question. So it doesn't sound like we've uh, changed much anyone's mind or our own here. It, leave taking feels a bit on the nose, and whether or not we get. Uh, you know, maybe the wind traveling through different parts of the world. Oh, they've got to they've got to have the wind. They've got to have the wind. Yeah. And, and, and then the, also know. in episode one, obviously, Matt, because you know we have winter night, oh. and and that call that went out for puppeteers. I'm fully on board with the Trollocs being Muppets. I'm just going to say that, <laughs> that that would be the best thing to happen to this show. I am all in. The Muppet all in version. on Narg the Muppet. Okay, yep. but not necessarily. I like what I like about this idea is they could have a little fun little, you know, some kids in the village are doing a little puppet show and like the parents have like the Trollocs, but it is a little mm -hmm. puppet Trolloc. <laughs> it's a puppeteer <laughs> having a Trolloc eating somebody. Uh -huh. A little on the nose reference to Winter Night. Uh -oh. Winter's Night that's about to happen. Okay, so that would really bother me, but it would still be fun. <laughs> Okay, so that's episode one. Not a lot of, uh, we can't really go very far with that episode. You could, though, show the, the Shan Shan. There's, there's a lot of uh, uh, leavings and yeah. arrivings. You could, yeah. you could show the wind Seems showing a lot of movement. I think the wind, I think their opportunity to do it is with the wind scene where the yeah. wind yeah. goes all over the continent and it's yeah. just showing scenes from here and there. Yeah. But it won't be more than a quick second in each spot. Yeah, no, I, I think that that, I guess what mm -hmm. I'm saying is I think we have to look at all these titles as not just encompassing the events around sure. where we kind of assume they are. And I absolutely believe the leave taking applies to a lot of other things that are happening in the world at this moment than just our, you oh. know, our group that we love the, so much. So The right. winds, I'm just now, I'm picturing like banners flapping in all these areas like Loghain's dragon banner and in Camelin and Faldara. And that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like what Rob said in the chat. They can juxtapose young Moraine leaving Tarvalon uh, hunting the Dragon Reborn, too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so, okay, here we go. Uh, episode, I don't think we're going to get into much controversy in this one either, but let's throw it out there. Episode <laughs> 102, as they say, Shadows Waiting. So, uh, Joe, where do you think we're at here? Shadows Waiting. We're at t so, if we have a starting point, it's Terran Ferry. Let's, let's go with that. Yeah. Uh, um, where do you believe uh, this ends? And then what happens in between? What's your initial take on this? So I think a, a great place for an ending, obviously, is is when they, you know, get separated. You know, they're escaping Shadow Logoth. I, I think Paralon's getting cut. 
I'm sorry. We've been cutting barrel on. I'm cutting barrel on. Um, if we do meet Min, they could introduce her at the White Tower instead of here. Agreed. Um, so I think Bailon's getting cut. I think this is going to be um, Taron Ferry. They're going to be traveling. They're going to get chased by the Trollocs and Shadow Logoth. And we're probably going to get a, a large portion of Shadow Logoth. And then I think this is a great opportunity then to start going to other areas of the continent and seeing what's going on in other places. Like this, we might they might hold off on that going to see like Loghain or the White Tower or anything until this episode because they want to kind of get everyone introduced uh, in the first episode so you know who, uh, who's who and what's going on. I think otherwise it's going to it's going to feel a little rushed. I think. Yeah. So let me throw this back. Yeah, back to the the rest of the panelists. This idea. Okay. So let's say we get to the split. That's where Joe's proposing a little bit further than mm-hmm. that. Um, we we believe the tinkers are involved. We haven't really seen much with the you know with Elias or however you pronounce his name correctly. Uh, <laughs> we haven't seen we haven't seen that casting happen. But you know again. We do see a bunch of people getting thrown into the show here, and maybe one of the ones that we just haven't been named is that individual. So the question is, do we have time for the split, and do you, all of you want to see it happening? And what else could Shadows Waiting refer to? So, uh, you know, I don't know if Aubrey, if you had something. It's, yeah, I do. Uh, so I, I think we definitely need the split because a lot of stuff happens in the split mm-hmm. that's important. Uh, so that's where Perrin first encounters the wolves. Um, the tinkers are introduced, which um, characters in there become important later. Um, they could be cut, but I think that it's a really cool thing about the world, and I'd be disappointed if they were cut. Um, I do what I do think is going to be condensed or cut cut down significantly is the Rand and Matt section of the split, um, just because it's unnecessary. Um, you necessary. have to have it's not necessary <laughs> definitely not necessary. look it's hilarious there's a couple <laughs> there's a couple of scenes in there that are are useful especially as rand is uh learning to channel mm-hmm. even though he doesn't know he's doing that you know his episode of being on a boat and everything and being all awesome on a boat um while that serves to get him out of out of shadar logoth they don't necessarily then have to go to four kings and and you know maybe we get either four kings or white bridge and not both or maybe we just get them directly to Camelin. Okay. um do you think, with, so you with think, tom do you think, being lost on the riverbank or something okay so before i jump over to rebecca do you think are mm-hmm. we're getting to Camelin at by the end I of do. episode two so I you're do. a you're a terran fairy I'm, to I'm Camelin at, speculation at, here okay yeah wow. or at least close to it yep, that's intense yep. that's intense do you uh, are you including the white cloaks in this uh or are you cutting their portion of this i piece think out? that a lot of the a lot of that is going to be cut uh oh, just based on the wow. way that the titles are going so far i think it has to be condensed um quite a bit okay uh, we do have uh even cast yeah. though and he we do like, have he even Valda, table, yep he was at the so, table read video the original one so yep yep and i think that um uh, there's an opportunity to have them smaller than it than it was in the book i think everything is just going to be an eye of the world is going to be condensed and the reason i think that is really the hook for the wheel of time now is all of the stuff that happens after eye of the world after it stops being a traditional fantasy in the um in the path of lord of the rings and switches over to this really expanded world with a huge cast of characters and multiple things going on at once and just this big grand epic scale and i think the faster they get to that the better overall for the show i think we should come back to that 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 idea that you just mentioned rebecca where are you at with this yeah so i thought a lot about the split question because you know i'm not sold on the four episode per book theory but yeah in contemplating that um it's feels like you have to really start speeding things up, especially if episode one is mainly Evansfield. Um, and so what big chunks could you cut? And I thought about the split, but I, I agree with Aubrey. I don't see how we can cut that split in the party. It just creates more problems. I mean, mm-hmm. Perrin meeting the wolves is pretty essential. I'm not sure that would make sense for that to happen if he's with Moraine. Another thought I had was Matt's got the dagger, and this whole time he's supposed to be like creating this bond with a dagger. And if Moraine is right next to him and can sense the dagger, how does yeah. that happen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, true. you know, I, I think the split will happen um, as far as what happens in there. Um, I mean, aside from that little potential leak of a 
tinker, I would have said wait and introduce the tinkers later and don't have them in this season because that seems not essential. The wolves seem yeah. essential. To me, the white cloaks seem essential. Um, I do like four kings and I'd love to see four kings. Um, right, right. I do like Vale Domon and I'd love to see Vale Domon. Yeah. Um, but as far as I do think that Matt and Rand sequence can certainly be trimmed up a lot. We don't need to be stopping at every farm. We don't need Els Grin. Right, right. I mean, that. I mean, some of us need it, but I get that well. everyone doesn't need it. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, no, but it's, so but it's, Matt, also yeah. you have to remember that that we have fourteen books worth of information. Um, Fifteen, if we're if we're going to count mm -hmm. count New Spring. Um, but in real time, in in world, everything takes three years. Sure. Now I don't think that the series is going to be three years, but there's a lot of convincing that has to happen yeah, but, for but, a lot of the stuff to make sense. Let me, let me throw this out. Uh, I, this goes back to a comment that was made before. I think you made it, Aubrey, mm -hmm. which is foundational moments uh, to mm -hmm. those characters. Uh, yeah. This is a foundational yeah. moment. That split yeah. when Matt and yeah. Rand are together yeah. is very yeah. foundational yeah. to who they become in the series. And that's yeah, why I like it. Sweet. Now, mm -hmm. going to Shadows Waiting, you know, again, right. we're very on the nose in our interpretation of where we're going. Yeah. Shadows Waiting yeah. could certainly bring in um, Ishamael here. It could bring in more of the, you know, dark mm -hmm. ones, plans, his, you know, his mm -hmm. monsters, his minions, I the black Aja. I don't Aja. think we get, I don't think we get cut. Uh, get to cut Shadar Logoth. It's too important. No, no, I'm not saying. I'm no, not no, saying uh, we cut it. I'm just yeah, saying. That, ho it. Yeah, I'm saying holistically, you might see other things happening. In other words, Shadows oh, sure, Waiting sure. has to be Shadar Logoth, mm -hmm. but it also might involve. We might get more of the shadow in episode two, if that makes sense. Uh, sure. I don't know if it's point of view versions or what it is, you know, but more of a more of an impression of who are they up against, uh, you mm -hmm. know. And I kind of wonder if we'll get more of that here. This question of where we end is so important here, and I and, yeah. I, and I want us to move on to episode three, but. What I'm hearing so far is, you know, maybe we're going to get uh, to to Whitebridge. Maybe we're going to get Camelin. Rebecca, which where did you think that we we would get? Where is I mean, where are you speculating? Ignore everything else. Yeah. Where is it that you think that we're getting? My here speculation is, I mean, again, just my instinct is not getting to, as far as Camelin because I'm not sure how much you can pack into this episode. But Tar and Ferry to Camelin, you would be losing a huge chunk of all these threads that we've just been discussing if you're trying to pack all that into an hour. So. Yeah. I just I don't see it. I, I my mine is going to be Shadows Waiting gets us well beyond the split. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the split's necessary. However, you know you just don't know what Rafe is going to pick here. They could they could fast forward us through Shadow Logoth immediately to Camelin. It's possible, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's very it's. It, <laughs> This is where we're going to, because here we are. We're about to hit episode three. I can't wait to see what everyone says in uh, in chat about this. Um, because we have a place of safety. Mm -hmm. Now, this doesn't directly tie. If I'm, I, I can't remember if there's a place of safety is an it, actual, yeah, it's, it's, it's yep. early on, right? It, it is. is. This is yeah. when yeah. Rand gets back to Edmund Field after the right. tackle went Yeah, yeah. Right. It's like it's like chapter Before seven or something yeah. or whatever yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a directly tied to that piece. Chapter they eight. clearly liked it uh, from the perspective of a place mm -hmm. of safety, mm -hmm. you know, assumed something about the idea. So yeah. as far as a place of safety, it does fit Camelin in mm -hmm. some sense, you know? In other words, they all get to Camelin. But does well, it does it mean anything the, else to Yeah, anybody? In, in the book, it's yeah. it's Tarvalon. Tarvalon is the place of safety that Moraine mm -hmm. says everybody has to get to. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. so, so I think that by the end of this episode, we're in the ways. I disagree. Wow. Okay, Joe, what, <laughs> what were you going to say? Because we, we are going to, because initially in the ways, they're attempting to go to Tarvalon. Yeah, I think um, oh, interesting. Safety, okay. it's going to be um, reference to the split, and it's probably in reference to um, Perrin and Egwene either meeting the Tinkers or meeting Elias or whoever they wind up meeting. And I, I don't know if they're going to throw in the scene with the setting, but I think this is going to be that whole scene where they uh, get captured by the White Cloaks. I think. I, I don't think they can cut that part because it's so essential to Perrin's story arc. Mm -hmm. Okay, what um, I love what I love about what you're saying, Joe, is that you are die hard holding on to the um, to the pace, and I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that you are like I'm not gonna let the the pace of what getting to Faldara, and even though kind of they they seem to be suggesting in these episodes, because I like that pace. Mm 
Mm-hmm. I just wonder if we if they're going to let us spend that much time there. I mm-hmm. I like the idea. I mean, Joe, at least do you think a lot of time. do you think they're going to get to Camelin, Joe, by three? Is that kind of where you hit Camelin? They get there, or do we get, um, or are we even touching Camelin? Is anyone going to speculate here that we avoid Camelin? <laughs> oh no, so, we got we have to go to Camelin. <laughs> we don't have to go to Camelin. <laughs> <laughs> got to get in the way gate somewhere. Joe's we, Joe's Joe's cutting Camelin. That's an interesting. Uh, yeah. By the way, for those that are watching us in chat, I'd love to hear when it comes to a place of safety. Where do you see that one ending? Where does that yeah. episode end for you? Because I want to point this out. We haven't seen episode three and four as far as table reads. That does not mean they didn't happen. We know we saw the table read for one and two, and we know we've just got the table read for five and six. It's possible that they've been filming three and four and they've done the table read for it and they just they didn't tell us. But we also have not seen Morgays. We have not seen Elida. We have not seen no. Elaine. Well, maybe. Galad. Uh, well, yes, we haven't been formally announced to us. Yeah. Maybe, we're, maybe we're starting to see them. We just don't know. Yeah. So, so they could it, do Camelin, but they don't need to do all of that part of Camelin. They could could rescue Moraine and Land and Nynaeve, rescue Perrin and Egwene, mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. Matt and um, uh, Matt and Rand get to Camelin. They go to the inn. They meet Loyal. They all meet up, and that's it. That's all that happens at Camelin, and then they leave. Right from there, there's no there's no low gain, or maybe they'll show a glimpse of low gain scene, but there's no Elaine palette. There's no that scene in the in the palette. Mm. Yeah, that's and this is the this this is the <laughs> so, question. Yeah, because yeah. Aubrey's saying the ways by the end of three, which I can see that uh, as in I can see the ways mm-hmm. happening quicker than. In other words, if mm-hmm. imagine they're tracking this as far as they've been chased. And we're still saying we're we're skipping Berlan. That seems like mm-hmm. an agreement here. We're we're willing to skip Berlan. We're they're being chased through the, through uh, Shadow Logoth. They're still being chased and split up, and then they're getting to Camelin and the city's surrounded. Right, like they're still being chased and they get in the ways. Uh, do you think? I mean, Aubrey, it sounds like this is one. You think that the first four might be one long chase scene? Is that? Do you not see them stopping and wait? And, and, and in other words, a place of safety isn't a isn't a stop. Yeah. Percent? No, I no. A place of safety is a goal. So you think that uh, that is a on the nose kind of reference to going to Faldara? To the, yeah, they're trying to trying to go to Tarvalon first. Okay, so you think that's they a reference can't, to can't get there. Yeah. Okay, Rebecca, where are you at with the uh, place of safety? So I the thing that jumped to my mind for what a place of safety might mean was the setting. So obviously, mm-hmm. I have no idea if we're going to see that, but I do think that is a really formative moment for Perrin's character and. Rafe has talked a lot about that, about really choosing to focus on things that serve characters. And I think that that's huge. So I personally lean towards that being in that episode. I could see certainly ending the episode in Camelon, especially for Rand and Matt, not necessarily the whole group, um, but that being their place of safety that um, that they do arrive in that episode. Um, but yeah, the idea that Perrin and Egwene being rescued, um, that would kind of fit in with that as well. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm. Oh, I'm, I'm going to suggest a larger cut here. I, I like the idea of Tarvalon uh, being mm-hmm. a goal here. Uh, we know mm-hmm. we've got Kate uh, Fleetwood. Is that her name? Uh, mm-hmm. She's playing Leandrin. Uh, we know that she was out in Prague earlier. I think it was uh, November timeframe when they announced the table read. It was shortly after mm-hmm. the table read for episodes mm-hmm. one and two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if Kate's out in Prague, Leandrin coming into play that early could suggest that uh, we, I, I think it's very valid to skip Camelin uh, as a target. Uh, in other words, make your way towards Tarvalon and then we actually see scenes and we, you know, Moraine is communicating, this is where they're going. And then, uh, we, and then we get the kind of move towards, you know, or maybe it's a stop through Camelin. And what maybe a skip is, is the scenes, are the scenes really with Elaine and Galad and all those things? Is that really an important piece, or is it just that they get to Camelin to get to the Ways? In the end of the day, do we just need the Ways and Loyal because we know Loyal is part of this? Do we just need him and we just jump to the Ways in this, you know, yeah. when we get to Camelin? Because yeah. I think you could cut. Yeah. We haven't seen more Gays, and we haven't seen all of them. I think you could cut them from this portion of the. You can, you can introduce them in the Tower too when uh, when Egwene and Anib go to the Good. Tower. They meet up with them again at the Tower, and Rand doesn't. I guess you want to get that. You want to get that start off of Rando meeting Elaine, though, so I don't yeah. know about that. That's, they have that's so little between the two of them throughout the yeah, series <laughs> that cutting <laughs> their formative first meeting seems like, ooh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know how they'd handle that. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, and, and because Loghain has been cast, I think you at mm-hmm. least get the the false dragon being wheeled through Camelin. 
uh, and that that whole scene because that's that's Logan's big scene, yeah. right? And if I anything, know. I want to see more people go into Camelot. Like right. I, I'd like to. I mean, we could have Swan go to Camelot um, and be introduced to her there rather than um, jumping to Tarvalin. Um, right. So I, I think Camelot could be this hub that you could potentially bring in other characters into it um, as part of Loghain's party um, or meeting that party. And but we I, do have that, yeah. that picture, right? Wasn't there that article they were filming in some sort of town and they had this big royal palace that they were showing in one of the locations? So I guess that, yeah. if, if that's Camelot, I mean, I don't know what else it could be. And then the, the other big thing that happens in Camelot is you realize that it's Rand who's the really important one. Mm -hmm. uh because you get the foretelling from elida yeah and i think yeah. that that piece is really that's really huge because but that they seem to be playing right now for people who haven't read the books um that one of these boys is important and we don't know which one mm -hmm. right? yeah but but that's one of those where you know we as readers think that's a really cool scene do viewers really need to care do they need to have this foretelling like you are the one you are going to break things rand you in other words he's getting enough of, we're getting enough of these you know probably some dreams and such that we're seeing him do that is Elida. Is that really is that scene really so impactful? Where versus um, a place of safety could be Tarvalon, and it could be a joke, right? This idea that Tarvalon is supposed to be a place of safety. Going well, back right. To that, that's dream. what it is, though. That's what it is in the book. Is that that they originally Moraine is saying, "Hey, Tarvalon, that's where we're going to go. That's where we're going to be safe." And they don't go to Tarvalon. They go to Faldara. Yeah, well, I'm saying because right, Leandrin, right. Leandrin's coming into play maybe earlier than, than we think, and I wonder if we're going to start to see the Black Aja machinations mm -hmm. happen earlier on in this idea of place of safety that Moraine keeps yeah. on selling to them. Mm -hmm. The viewer starts going like, oh, wait a second, this place is dangerous. You know, we, we don't want them going mm -hmm. there. So that's I, I, I'm that's part of me is like maybe we, we're cutting some of that stuff. And the place of safety, again, if we're thinking too narrow, you know, um, what are some of the other things happening in the world? And again, I think mm. we're going to get the wind taking people an episode kind of through things that are going on. But a place of safety might take us, you know, Loghain, right? It might mm. reference him going to Tarvalon, right? There's, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can kind of play with those words where it doesn't necessarily directly correlate to what our main five are doing with Moraine. Mm -hmm. That's, and that was maybe the, the theme of that, the title of that episode is actually we're seeing an episode where no one is safe. Yeah. And the right. entire time, everyone is thinking there's no place of safety. There's supposed to be this right. mythical place of safety. And if they're just besieged throughout that episode and are never safe, which is kind of fitting, um, that could be a, a, sort of the opposite of what the title suggests. Well, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, it's hard for me to believe that Leandrin or Kate was out there filming. And then we get the table read that's actually happening right now for five and six mm -hmm. and that, that, that she wasn't. In well, other Le episodes. Leandrin yeah, can certainly sure. could certainly be part of the crew that's escorting the game. I think all these Eyes to Die that are being cast now true. can show up as part of the guard Definitely. escorting the game. That's right? true, but Maria. I mean, well, it, we don't know who Maria could, is, but no. it could be costume fitting too. Sometimes they have to go out there to get fitted for the costumes before the. Oh, that's a good point. Have been watched. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, no, that's 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 a good point. That it doesn't have to be that they went out there. I, I don't know the industry well enough to know if that just yeah, I mean, would or wouldn't happen. But yeah, that's a maybe the people in chat uh, can let us know if that's just kind of part of it, you know. Uh, okay, so it sounds like we have some disagreements. I think we're diverging here, which is good mm -hmm. <laughs> because <laughs> because we're about to even diverge in greater ways. Like yeah, I knew this are. was going to happen, yep. right? We're all le we're all going out of Emmons Field together. But we're going to be widely apart. We're all splitting, you know. Here we're, we're having our own splitting moment because we have the Dragon Reborn, Episode One Hundred Four. Mm -hmm. Okay, Joe, <laughs> from where you're at, because I feel like you're you're kind of slow rolling it through the other world, which I like. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I, I was I think I was pushing back on our own live adaptations. Where do you think the Dragon Reborn is, is taking right. us? So before we got the Blood Called Blood episode title, I was I was totally in the camp. You know, everybody thought now they're doing two books in one. Uh, season and I was like no I was like the dragon reborn you know my first initial reaction was the dragon reborn is probably like uh, the, uh, more Loghain it's going to be something to do with Loghain and we kind of knew the flame of Tarval and then I was like that's probably just an introduction uh, that could be Camelin you know or maybe we see some more um, we we meet the White Tower earlier and they're going to cut and we're going to see some like politics going on or some behind the scenes White Tower machination um, but after the Blood Calls Blood episode came out and then I saw you see Alana was cast you're seeing these other people who are supposed to be Aes Sedai cast, and I think all of those people are Aes Sedai water types. Um, I think this is going to be, uh, and then we also saw that picture, uh, set photo that Rafe uh, posted. That's one thing we forgot to talk about. Um, set photo of Rand mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. that mountain 
Yep. Um, and what could that be? And and my guess is my thinking is that's Tarman's gap. Yeah. So so I'm thinking maybe we cut the uh, the fight with Ichal Mayal and it's just a Tarwin's gap kind of scene there. And maybe we see Aganor and Balthamel. I don't know. I really don't know about that. But um, I think that's going to be Tarwin's gap. And I think that's where it's probably going to wind up ending somewhere around there. Okay. So you were slow. You were going slow. But you think that we could kind of. <laughs> I feel like there's an episode between that moment. In other words. Oh, yeah, well, we were... So we're going to skip Baldara. We're going to go through the ways from Camelin. Okay. Okay. You're going to. Okay. Right to the, right to the blight. This is, mu- this is music to Mary's ears, uh, Mary, uh, <laughs> because Mary in our live That's adaptation, she's like, just uh, just pass Faldara and go on. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, and if you need to know why the why there are soldiers from Shinar there, you just do a cut scene to Shinar or, or Lan says something, you know, gives a line or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. He heard a rumor, he caught a rumor or something like that. So we can just skip Faldara and we'll hit it on the way back and that's where our blood is. Okay, okay. Yeah, I like... Uh... I, I that is a, a very kind of it's a, it's a way to get us kind of a fast forward there. Now, before uh, Rebecca, I want to get your opinion on, on the Dragon Reborn and kind of mm-hmm. see if you take this anywhere. This is a live call and talk show. Sorry for all of you that have been waiting to call in. You can call now for uh, Nick and Lancer. You know, give everyone at least, you know, three minutes and then you can call in. Man. <laughs> Just give them a second for any new callers that want to give us a call. But yeah, feel free to give us a call. Uh, we might even ask your opinion about uh, the Dragon Reborn here. The number, if you don't know it, is 1-313-825-5968. That's 1-313-825-5968. We might keep those calls kind of short just because, you know, we have a lot to talk about here. So, but yeah, we're looking forward to talking to those of you that want to jump in and give us your opinion. Um, the, uh, so yeah. Rebecca, when it comes yeah. to the Dragon, Dragon Reborn, Reborn. Yeah. are you so, in this kind of traditional kind of, uh, not tra- I shouldn't say traditional, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a natural way for us to get there. Do you think yeah. it's diverging from this idea of being Loghain and Rand and related to Camelin and Faldara? So, I mean, my initial instincts were similar to to Joe, um, where I think that it's got to be somewhat about Loghain, right? We got to at least have some focus on Loghain in that episode. I can certainly see maybe that being the episode where we kind of realize that Loghain is not the Dragon Reborn, but I think there's definitely some focus on on him. And um, as far as whether we would get as far into, you know, like a... Tarwin's Gap kind of scenario or something where we might get Rand channeling enough that we know he's the Dragon Reborn, that would surprise me, even if we're really doing a, a fast pace on this. Um, my instinct has been that the show is going to want to lead us on as long as they can, as far as who the Dragon Reborn is. So I would be very surprised to see like a hard confirmation of Rand in that episode. So, but you, do you think the horn then plays a part in this or not? Um, again, I am not convinced by episode titles that we're four episodes per book. So I, I yeah. think that they are playing a little loose with episode titles. I mean, we already know that some things are out of order if we just look at chapter titles. Um, yeah. So I, I'm not convinced by that, um, that we will already be in Faldara necessarily by episode five. I mean, it's possible, but... Um, I'm not sold. Okay. Okay. And Aubrey, before you give me your opinion, let's uh, let's bring our first caller into the show. Uh, I think most of you will recognize this call. Let's bring him in. Hey, uh, welcome, welcome, Nablus, to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? Hey, what's going on, Matt? How are you? <laughs> Good, man. Good to have you on. So, uh, what have we said? Or where do you think this is going that, uh, from your speculation, what we've heard recently for the last couple of days, you know, where uh, where do you think uh, we're either going right or wrong? So I'll be brief because I know you guys, uh, this is going to be a packed episode. But uh, yeah, yeah, no worries. I'm actually in the middle of working on a video on this topic. So it's like this is like good research. So uh, awesome. <laughs> um, here, here was my initial thoughts. I was literally thinking in my head because wh- I was in the camp that Rebecca was, but I was saying that I, I, I really thought the the episode titles were almost a red herring of sorts, maybe set to mislead us, like maybe not the chapter titles that they're you know from the books, but they a lot of the stuff that's announced, the, the characters that they're bringing on, I think it really is looking more like we're going to see the majority of Eye of the World wrapped up in four episodes. 
Okay. And so when I when that kind of came together with me, uh, I was thinking in my head, man, this is going to suck. <laughs> I was like, uh, like, I, I was just like, you know, because I've been pretty positive about this, and I was thinking in my head, oh, gosh, they're going to rush this so fast. Mm. But, um, and, and I'll talk about this in the video I'm going to do, but I, was, yeah. I, mean, I went back and I thought, okay, if they were going to put it into four episodes, how would they do it? Mm-hmm. Could it be done? And so I went back and I watched Game of Thrones. I watched four episodes of Game of Thrones, um, and I timed the point of view scenes. Okay, so I went through and I timed all of them. Okay. Um, there's on average in most of the Game of Thrones episodes, there's 16 point of views that are about two and a half minutes long. And so I took that information as kind of a baseline, and I went back and tried to map it out. Not only at this point do I think that they are going to do that i think that it's entirely plausible that you could pretty much map out all of eye of the world without cutting bear Long, without cutting the white cloaks um without cutting Caimlin, and actually end with rand at the eye of the world at the end of episode four and i know that sounds crazy and nuts but I'm <laughs> out. wow and, okay so i i'm well now i'm now i'm interested in seeing the show when you do it, I, like with the hard, you. I like the hard research you. numbers i like that yeah. Okay, so I, I and I and I will call out this blood calls blood, and I, I want to point this out. They did not give us episode five title for a long time. You know, no. we had one, two, three, four, and six for a while, and uh-huh. it makes a lot of sense because you can tell it's just like they shook the nest, right? Like there's like mm-hmm. all the bees are out flying around. Like wait a second, blood calls blood, and everyone's kind of losing mm-hmm. their mind a little bit. I mean, I did right. I was like, wait, how do we get around mm-hmm. minds around this idea of getting there? But it does seem like they're full force kind of just throwing it out there now. Like, yep, mm-hmm. we have Alana here. We have Leandrin. We have other Aes Sedai that might be Leanne. We might have Suan, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, wait, all those people are going to be in Feldara. They, and then they're, you know, as Narg put out, they have this bath scene that they're looking for potentially, which does kind of either that's a rumor and speculation. We can't trust it. But I'd like to throw it in here because, you know, that would make sense for an episode five uh, if we're up in Faldara. Uh, it would it would absolutely make sense. I just it just feels and I, I know this is funny because for me it's like I feel like it's one or two episodes too fast, but that just might yeah. be my fanboy nature wanting more yeah. Eye of the World. I'll, I'll admit that. Yeah. So <laughs> I, by the way, Nablus, totally appreciate you calling. So tell me this: Where do you think then? Sure. Before I let you go, I'll ask this question: um, Where do you think then on an eight episode arc? What is your end point in the Great Hunt? I think they will. I don't think this will be all of Great Hunt. So I do want to be clear on that. I think Great Hunt, I, I think FOMO will happen in the middle of episode two or season two. Um, I, I think that it will probably end somewhere around the point where Egwene is kidnapped and Rand ends up in the portal stone. That would be probably where I would end it. That's enough of a cliffhanger. It's enough of, a, of what's going to happen to have us hooked and i think there's enough action up till that point um i think that's probably where we end now okay. given i haven't uh i think we need to hear a little bit more about what episode seven and eight might be <laughs> right, yeah. right i had to be a betting if i was a betting man i think that's where we're going to be because okay. i do think we're going to see some new spring flashbacks um yep. yep and i think that'll be in the flame of tarval in episode so okay I know you guys haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, so we all shut up. But, we're just about uh, there. No, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a that's a it's it's reasonable. I think they might go a little bit further than that, but that's where I'd like to. If they do go, I'd like to see them stop somewhere right around there. Uh, when is the video going to be posted? Yeah. When are you uh, going to be up here in the next day or so? <laughs> well, I, I I have to say I'm going to try to do it tomorrow. But okay. The difference is we'll see how long I can get uh, get up, get everything done tonight. So. Yeah, no worries. I look forward but, uh, to uh, hey, kind guys, of seeing. Thanks for having I'll, me on. I want to hear the breakdown, man. So hey, I appreciate you calling in. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Hey. Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. So we do have a, a bunch of callers. I don't want to make them wait too long. Let's bring them in. And I think uh, that our next caller is, uh, I think it's Kim. Hey, uh, welcome to Hello? the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing? Hey, pretty good. Um, thanks, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So uh, first time um, caller tonight. Is that, uh, is that correct? I am. I am. I actually just recently started watching watching um, your show. Awesome. Um, just uh, over the last couple of weeks, um, I discovered it and re- really enjoying it. I'm kind of working my way through your. I'm up to the second, the last episode of your um, summarizing the Eye of the World. Or, so, <laughs> okay, so, really enjoying it. So I far. have to ask you a question then. Uh, who is the most correct? 
Me, <laughs> me, Mary, Tal, or Todd. Who would you say is more correct more often? I just they're they're in, they're watching in chat, so I just wanted to hear this. <laughs> um, honestly, it, 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 honestly, it, it depends on the issue. Like on, the, um, you know, some of them like. Like cut, like cutting loyal, I'm absolutely in favor of keeping loyal. I understand <laughs> that it's the cleanest sex size, but I just think it, the ogier differentiate the series from, say, Game of Thrones, where it's all humans. It kind of becomes like Game of Thrones, with you know basically just the evil race and humans. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I would agree with you that this idea that it matters which topic is true. Uh, because we all have our favorite topics, and they make fun of mine. So, uh, where do you think? Uh, you know, give us your summary of where you think uh, we're gonna get here in season one of the Wheel of Time show. How far do you I think, think we're gonna the go? Key, I I kind of think the key remark Grace said, said a while back was when they asked, "Will season one be book one?" He said, "Yes and no." Yeah. I think the structure of season one will be the first book, but I think they're going to take stuff from the second and move it to happen earlier. I do think more or less some sort of Tarwin's Gap Eye of the World type thing will be at the end of the season. Interesting. But okay. I think they're going to move some of the stuff earlier. Oh, that's interesting. Wait, uh, um, you, think, you think they're going to... Okay, so I like that. I love that mm-hmm. speculation, which is the idea of pulling in more of the Great Hunt, but still having Tarwin's Gap as the capped stone that, that's an interesting idea I hadn't ever thought about them doing that they certainly could because a lot can happen and you can certainly do tarwin's gap it would have to be not as um not as condensed as we've talked about these first four episodes getting a, there would have to be a little bit more room there but that's a that's an interesting idea so you still think this season could end with tarwin's gap like an eight episode season I do. And I okay. think um, that some of the stuff, for example, the blood called blood, which seems to be sort of open to media. Oh, that must mean that, you know, we're going to season two. I, I look at it as episode five. And in, if you were ending on Tarwin's Gap, that's about the pace where you'd have an episode basically with, you know, the Rand and Matt with the Dark Friends and Fane and, and Camelot. Why not move the dark prophecy up to there because and have that be the thing that directs them to the eye of the world? Honestly, mm. as much as I love Jordan, the the chain of thought that gets the characters to go to the eye of the world is kind of convoluted. Mm. Mm. It is a light. It is light. The first time is, through, I didn't light. really understand why they went. It took multiple rereads, and you don't have that type of patience with an audience. Okay, so I really love how you're rewriting this, which is uh, I love the idea of Blood Calls Blood still giving us Camelin. By the way, I'm telling you I love this because uh, I do like the idea of them slowing down uh, a bit. Uh, so I love the idea of moving Blood Calls Blood. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a fantastic idea. Uh, I love both of these. This this idea that they could still end that way and, and still be stay true to kind of all the things that Rafe has done and all of the people that we're seeing come into the books or into the, these episodes so far. They could still manage to still cap it at Tarwin's Gap. Um, yeah, that's a that's a fantastic idea. Uh, it, but before I let you go and before I take the next caller, tell me um, your favorite Forsaken. Um, pr- probably a- Asmodean. We get to spend most yeah. time with him outside of him, you know, in for a confrontation mode. And I felt like, you, you know, some of the scenes really where you kind of talk, you know, just kind of talking around, you, you get more of a sense of his personality than almost any of the others. Okay, by the way, I've never, ever heard anyone ever answer the question that way. Two, uh, who killed Asmodian? It's my favorite theory. So I love your answer because I could talk about who killed Asmodian uh, probably for days. So fantastic answer. That's that's awesome. Hey, thank you so much for giving us a call. Um, I hope you do keep on watching. Uh, by the way, the correct answer that for the first question I asked you was, the innkeeper is more correct than everyone else. That was the correct answer. <laughs> um, but otherwise, hey, I, I appreciate you being a viewer and a caller, and and thanks for taking a moment and giving us a call tonight. Hey, have a thanks have, a lot. Yeah, have a good evening. Bye bye. You too. Bye. Bye. So let's uh, let's get our last. We'll take these last couple of callers in, then we'll jump back to the. They've been all waiting here just for about eleven minutes. So uh, let's bring uh, Glenn in. Hey, Glenn, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Well, well, pretty good here. We haven't. I feel like we haven't really got to the nuts and bolts here with Blood Calls Blood. This is uh, that's that's where we need. I, I love uh, Joe's on on Joe's show. 
they called it blood i think uh boils blood or, or yes. sorry blo- uh, boil I don't know, something like oh, that that's it. Boils uh, blood. blood boils blood i love i love that <laughs> to show kind of uh what did you what was your reaction glenn to all of the news that came out in the last week are you are you on board uh, so what was your reaction to all of the news with all of the the new actors that they've announced and such um are you excited about episode five and episode six involving Alana and and Leandrin and such? Uh, what's your what's your theory? I'm trying about what it's to be? I, I'm I'm trying not to get too excited. You know, I just that's how I took it with Game of Thrones. You know, because I, I didn't want to get too excited and have my hopes dashed. You know, because you kind of can't. Because I've had I, I've seen bad shows get turned out, and it's just. You, you got to keep your hopes down. Otherwise, things, I don't know. That's just yeah. the way I play it. So, no, you're probably uh, right. You're you know, probably I, right. I pay attention. I pay attention and see what's going on, but I try not to get too excited. You know, that's just the way I, I, I try to stay. That's probably good with this because I can imagine this year, especially how it started and to, to my panelists, I, when Lanfear is announced and Varen and we get mm-hmm. actually some trailers for the show and we got we get more images, I, right. it is going to amp up our hopes for it. I love that you're staying level, Glenn. <laughs> I love that aspect. You're like, I'm Thank not you. letting any of Thank this you. excitement because you probably will be the least disappointed of, of everyone, right? This because there's right. a great chance for disappointment here. That's for sure. How do you when it comes to the right. end? Well, well, sorry, go ahead. I have a friend who's really pessimistic about the show. So and he just he looks at the cast and he's just like, eh. He he's not excited at all. He saw the Emmons Field Five and he saw a bunch of pretty faces and he's like. He thought it was for the MTV crowd, the ten to fifteen year olds, and I'm like, no, they, they are the MTV and, and crowd. So, I, I've, <laughs> so I, I've got him pulling me that direction, and I'm trying to pull. So he's part of what's keeping me so level about it. Stay strong, Glenn. Stay strong, Glenn. Yeah. So tell me before I before I <laughs> before I let you go, I want to know the answer to this question. How do you think, and where do you think season one, from all the news that we've gotten here? What do you think it means for the end of the season one of the Wheel of Time TV show? Uh, where do, are we going to go into the Great Hunt? Are we going to end at Tarwin's Gap? What well, are you feeling here? See, I, I don't doubt that we're going to go into see, into book two. I do think that's a strong possibility. But I, I think we're putting too much stock into all these episode titles. Because if you go back and you watch that video with the... Uh, table read it starts out with the script and the script is blurred out we already knew the episode titles they'd given us the episode titles right why would they blur the script the front page of the script out <laughs> if we already knew the episode titles you're, uh... they were hiding something <laughs> you're going they to change the titles you're going down the conspiracy theory route i, I love think- it I love this. Yeah, I, I think I don't think the titles we have are what they are. I do think it's possible we'll end up a little ways into the Great Hunt. How far I don't know. Okay. I think maybe it might end right after the attack on Faldara with the horn and the and the dagger being stolen. Yeah. That okay. I think would be a good cliffhanger. Yeah, with yeah. the realization, oh crap, the horn and the dagger have been stolen. Matt screwed, you know. <laughs> I, I I do like that as a you know, that that would be a fun spot to smash to black for sure. I think that would be I think that would be a good smash to black. I agree. I agree. <laughs> hey, uh, Glenn, so, as always, really appreciate you calling in. Appreciate you being a viewer, and uh, no problem. And please, uh, please you. do call back. Hey, we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Talk to you soon. Later. Bye. Okay, uh, Rob is a first time caller. Let's bring him in here. One second. Hey, Rob, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? I am excellent. How are you? Great. We're doing, I think we're, we're, we're definitely having a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, we're about to get to, uh, to uh, Blood Calls Blood, which is going to draw some blood, I think, from where we think this is going to end. So uh, what's your reaction to all the news that came out this last week? Oh, I mean, I'm pretty excited, but then I've been blowing up Twitter all day. Let's do the <laughs> World News, so you guys probably know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is Weekly Wheel News. Welcome. Yeah. No, I, oh, I, I hadn't tied. Great. This is Weekly Wheel Hi. News. If you guys aren't following me on Twitter, uh, I, 
definitely do. Uh, oh, we love you. Oh, yes. Yeah. We love you. You must be dark <laughs> friend if you're not. <laughs> yes, you're a dark friend if you're not. So uh, what's your what's your reaction to this uh, to this concept of an eight-episode arc for season one, knowing that we get Blood Calls Blood, whatever that means, in the Flame of Tarbalon in episode six? How do you think that Rafe is going to end this season? How deep do you think he's going to go? Well, I think, like, I, th- I think I made a typo in the chat, but I would agree with the last caller. I think it's going to end where the horn gets stolen the second time. Um, Kyrian is burning. You know, it seems like all hope is lost, and it's like, boom, you know, what are we going to do? We're all screwed. So. Okay. Yeah, th- that's, I, I think the way the other caller mentioned it, pulling episodes or, idea, or whatever, uh, scenes from the Great Hunt in and integrating them into the Eye of the World could be an interesting twist where we don't get it kind of in that linear way that we read it uh, while still getting a lot of the great hunt kind of pieces. Uh, um, or, and then, or in the, in the case you said, actually having the horn at the end, actually getting through that and going the opposite way and just kind of rushing out to the end of the great hunt. Uh, there's, there's such a polar opposite directions of fans kind of wanting one or the other. And I'm hoping we end somewhere in the, between those, which is, you know, between Falme and, Tarwin's Gap, I think that there's a place, <laughs> there's a happy medium there where I would like yeah. to to settle, you know, uh, because I really, uh, the idea that we would rush to the end of The Great Hunt, I guess annoys me. It's like Tom, yeah. uh, it's like uh, uh, yeah. Tom on Joe's show said, you know, cutting portal stones as a way to get through The Great Hunt. And I was, I was, I was very offended by this very idea. I was too, Matt. Yeah, yeah. I think that, yeah, I ahead. think that, it, you know, we should let the, we should let the, the storytellers, you know, craft it the way they want because it's going to be paced well. They know what they're doing. You know, like I got, I got to talk to Rafe and so without giving any spoilers or anything like that because I couldn't. Then uh, I just want to say like I'm, I, I have faith in what he's doing. I think he's going to do um, a great job, and it's definitely going to be different from the books, but it's a totally different medium, and you know that's that's kind of necessary. There's going to be a lot of stuff that gets cut out. But I think it, it, in the end, it's gonna, it, it'll still be recognizable as a real time. And I think it'll be good. Yeah, no, I think that's, and I think that's what kind of Brandon was trying to set us all up for. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like that his comment is like a really well, you know, a well written, not warning, uh, cautionary statement of, you know, this is going to be different, and there's going to be some changes here. So yeah, I, I think a reminder of that, of uh, of how many changes there might be, is. Uh, <laughs> Is, is a good one for us as we get amped up with all these casting news. Uh, so, hey, by the way, uh, before I let you go, uh, you heard, maybe you heard me ask another caller, uh, because we're getting into the Great Hunt and the Forsaken are coming in, uh, who's your favorite Forsaken? My favorite Forsaken is Mogedian. Really? Okay. Mogedian, yeah. Or, but, yeah. yeah. I call her both. Mogedian. Mog- 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Mogedian. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she's your favorite. Think- you guys are, this is so awesome. I love that yeah. Forsaken have v- diverse fans throughout the world. I love, I love that aspect of our fandom. Mogedian is your, why? Why is Mogedian your favorite? Well, I think that, that you get a really good perspective uh, from her that you don't get through a lot of the other Forsaken through the series. Um, and uh, I just think that she's the most interesting, how she hangs back and just kind of lets stuff play out and hops in there to take advantage and stuff. She's a good villain. So uh, I, I just want to point out, uh, Lanfear is the best Forsaken, but Mogedian's a good, <laughs> she's a good sub- substitute, uh, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's like, oh, best looking favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Best, that's for sure. Hey, man, I appreciate you calling in. Really appreciate the work you do. Uh, I can't wait to continue following it. And um, yeah, just keep producing that awesome content. And for those of you, again, that are watching Weekly Wheel News, Go follow it. It's awesome. And uh, and hopefully you'll keep on uh, giving us a watch and uh, call in again, okay? Yeah. Thanks, Char. Thanks, Char. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, we have two more callers, and we're going to <laughs> take their calls, and then we're going to jump back into it. Um, uh, well, let's get them online. And then that'll be enough for the callers tonight. We appreciate everyone calling in. Let's, uh, let's have Nick come on in. Hey, Nick, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. And <laughs> thanks for giving everyone else a chance to call. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, you know, it's so funny. You said that you said it about me and Lancer and I literally had the number already up. ready to hit. Uh, <laughs> I felt it. I felt it through. <laughs> 
I felt it through the, the pattern. The pattern, I just felt the thread get pulled, and I was like, oh, I should tell him. Yeah. <laughs> Hold off for a second. <laughs> and, so, and then I got stuck behind, like, 10 people, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate I appreciate it. I appreciate the, the waiting. So where do you think season one ends? What's your what's your opinion of with um, everything you've seen out come out today? Has it changed where you were where you were thinking, and what do you, what's your new th- what's your new way of thinking? No, it's it's more it's actually more confirmed what I've been saying in a bunch of different calls, um, which is I think we're getting both books in season one, but I I don't think we're going to get everything. I think certain things are going to be moved around until season two, but I think the majority of the the gist of the books will be covered in season one even if it's eight episodes, although I was happy to learn tonight because I thought uh, Daniel Green covered it, so I thought it was confirmed. Uh, I'm happy to hear that the uh, eight-episode number is unconfirmed, meaning we could end up with 10 or 12. Yeah, I think that's wish- um, I think it's wishful crazy. thinking. <laughs> I think we're, I think it's going to be eight, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely unconfirmed, and so I'm all about unconfirmed facts leading me to speculate even more. So I appreciate that idea for sure. So there could be yeah. ten. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if we get ten, ten's a happy medium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could, I could <laughs> see it done in ten. Uh, does everybody agree on the panel? Uh, if they, if we had ten episodes, would you agree to a two book, ten episode series? So if it's ten. And these are the titles, and it's paced like we think it's going to be paced. And yeah. they should be spending more time on either world, I think. You'd want them to shift more, right? More than world. four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You split it up. I would uh, see. I would give. I would give the Great Hunt six over the Isle of the Four. That's just. I, I'm yeah, partial. I would also. Give the Great Hunt. <laughs> I would too. I'm just partial yeah. to you know the Great Hunt. It, it is harder to cut from the Great Hunt. I, I yeah definitely. Yeah, it's nonstop action. So. Yeah, if I had to, if I had to give up uh, Berlan for Portal Stones, oh. I would do that every day of the week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what's the uh, biggest piece before I let you go, Nick, what's your favorite piece of news that came out this last week? What kind of shocked you the most? Um, I, I, I think the, uh, I think some of the episode titles was like, because, you know, we, we had all been speculating, you know, they can't, we're not getting 14 seasons. We'll be lucky to get eight. And so it's all like, they have to be moving fast. But I, when I saw the episode titles, I'm like, wow, these are accurate. They're not moving fast. They're like moving at lightning speed. <laughs> right, right, and right, right. I mean, like, I, I was sitting there trying to figure out how are they fitting all this content? What are they, what are they, <laughs> we're getting like a streamed one. It's, it's not a real time show. It's almost like a summary of it. <laughs> I, I think a lot I of just, fans feel that way for sure. <laughs> Yeah, the eight, the eight, honestly, the eight episode, um, all jokes aside, the eight episode thing worries me for the pacing. Um, I agree they can do Eye of the World in four, um, but it's the great hunt, and especially if we're going to keep this pattern going for later seasons. Yeah. Um, I cannot imagine doing certain books in four or five episodes. I just can't. Yep. Yeah, like yeah. The Shadow Rising. Yeah. I, oh my gosh, I, The Shadow I, Rising. That, oh, that's, we can't even go season. there right now. Yeah, yeah, we'll do another show on that. <laughs> like, that's, oh, that's brutal. Well, well. Hey, <laughs> hey, thanks, Nick. I really appreciate that opinion. I think a lot of people feel that way. And as always, hopefully you felt like my call out, my shout out to you by name was a, 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 a nod of respect to you. Uh, I really appreciate that you yeah, uh, it, watched it the actually, show. And, and I was you, laughing. Okay, good, good. I, that's, how, that's how I wanted you to take it. Uh, and I do appreciate you kind of making space. That we, I think we had four new callers today. It was awesome to, to get some new blood in here and, and glad you stuck in and uh, waited here. Yeah. So. Um, we will see you. Uh, hopefully oh, by the next way, my now. favorite, for, my favorite Forsaken. Oh yeah, go for you, it. You can ask the, you ask him, but it's favorite Forsaken. Um, my favorite Forsaken is uh, Isham as is, uh, is modern, modern, and all his different forms. Yeah, Isham is lame. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, we'll, we'll have a whole show about me just d- dissing on Ishmael, and you can call in and we'll chat about it. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate it. Have a good night, okay? That's right. Okay, <laughs> have a good one. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay, to my panel, you guys have stuck in here really long. One last caller, we'll just say, uh, we'll get Lancer on and uh, chat with him for a second, and then we'll break down Blood Calls Blood. Um, Lancer, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. How you doing, man? Hey, you guys. I feel like that I'm on Cheers, and if Nick is Cliff, then I have got to be Norm. <laughs> he called us both out, so... 
I mean, you got you got people on the panel chugging on beers. I mean, my goodness. I mean, you know, boom, Lancer. Okay, cool. Right, I'm here. <laughs> I, I I think that's a great way to take it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That makes you Sam, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Sam. Yes. I'll take it. Sam. Uh, yeah, I'm not that cool. Uh, Sam was cool, wasn't he? I don't know. Growing up as a kid, I thought of Sam was Sam cool. Was I cool. don't know. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's kind of a loser now. I don't know. I have to go back and watch it. So, uh, so Lancer, uh, when it comes to all the news that came up, how do you think season one is going to end? Oh, man. See, that's that's the red herring, isn't it? Because one thing that Nablus did not say in all of his research, and you got to give the man credit because he's awesome, Game of Thrones episode one was almost an hour and a half long. So, I mean, if you take that into consideration that the first episode could be longer than the whole you know, 45 52, mm-hmm. you know, approximate minutes. You could get a lot done in episode one so that it doesn't feel as rushed and as paced when you get to episode four, where a lot of you guys are thinking that it's going to be the end of the eye of the world. You can get a lot done in an hour and a half for an hour, 25 mm-hmm. minutes for episode one. So going by that thinking, oh man i think i kind of agree with you that um it would be nice to end it with the portal stones and have a you know just to have them all disappear and then you smash the block and it's like wait where'd they go wait what no the green the green no 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 so, no, so i just want to i just want to remind you of something when you agree with me that is positive so thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing we're you're on the same page that's that's wonderful. No, yeah, I, I think at the end, um, I think uh, that would be a nice spot to to uh, to close out that first season. I don't know that that's going to be the case. Uh, from everything we're getting here, we're, we're going to break down blood calls blood here. You know, it does signal that we might get a little bit further than that. I'm hopeful not too much further, but you know, in the end of the day, Rafe <laughs> Rafe gets to make the choices. We just get to you know react to them and live by them. Uh, so uh, when it comes to the, your favorite news, before I let you go. What was your favorite news that came out of this last week? Um, well, it's the lack of news. I want my men, I want my Elaine, and I want my more gay. Hold so on. Everyone is going just lack of news this... back in the day. <laughs> that wasn't yeah, enough for him. the lack of news. I, oh, my gosh. That was so overwhelming. How do you... Of the, of the ladies. How do you lack of news this last week, Lancer? No, you need to go back and they rethink <laughs> that and appreciate. We just got so much craziness. That was... But I get it. I get it. I want my land fear and my men. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> no, I'd love for them to be cast. Oh, and, and favorite. Go ahead. Yeah, and favorite uh, uh, Forsaken. I'm surprised that no one has said this, and I'll be the, the one on the limb on this one. Grandel. I'm sorry. She is the Donald Trump of the Forsaken. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole bunch of uh, half-naked people oh. compulsing everybody to dance, whatever. I mean, you know, she has the very best people, and she has the very best words, and she just has the very best parties all the time. So, yeah. you know, that, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I, I, be grand old, so. yeah, that's another person I'd love to have a show about how worth, worthless of a forsaken she is. Uh, so, anyways, we'll, we'll we'll have another show on that, like how much Matt hates certain forsaken. Uh, but Lancer, always appreciate you calling in, and uh, yeah, I love the Cheers reference. That was great, man. Have a good night, okay? <laughs> you guys take care. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, before we move on here, I just want to thank all of our callers, uh, panelists. If you've never had that happen before, that's what it's like when you pick a topic like this. Uh, you know, everyone loves to talk about this, and this is this has been a huge news week. Uh, and speaking of this being a huge news week, Rebecca, blood mm-hmm. calls blood. Does this mean what we think it means? in yeah. your mind? Are we are we in the great hunt in reality? Are we having a pat and faint? Because I'll be honest. Uh, if this actually means, if this is the most literal of all these titles, I'm excited. And that is yeah. to say, we get that dungeon scene, I'm in. So what do you feel about Blood Calls Blood? Yeah. Uh, I mean, so I definitely am not convinced that it has to mean that. I definitely think they could be playing around with episode titles. It does seem like, hey, we should be bringing in that um, prophecy in some way if we're going to have that that title. But... Um, you know, there's a lot of other things that are referred to in there, and, and they could bring it in, in a different way. So I'm definitely not all on board with that. Like with the one caller said, we could potentially be moving things around a little bit, kind of not following it quite as linear, linearly. Um, I did want to also throw out yeah. that Rafe had said 
Tarwin's Gap was one of the things that he was most looking forward to oh, adapting okay. in the first two books. And so I think okay. we should keep in mind that that might be a pretty big part of the season then, whenever it happens, whether it happens in the middle or the end, um, that it's not going to be something that we're going to minimize necessarily. But it's That's interesting. Yeah. Looking. So Tarwin's Gap is, is coming down our route. Would you, would you be a fan though, if they, uh, of the idea of moving um, the, the, the dungeon scene, if you will, to Camelin. Mm-hmm. In other words, which, yeah. are you a fan of that idea that pushes the totally plot along? I think it's totally possible. Um, okay. And I liked the idea that one of the callers brought in of maybe we use that dark prophecy there as a way to get them to the eye, assuming we're, we're going to the eye, yeah. um, as opposed to the way it was done in the books with um, you know, the, the dreams and the, the Tuatha An, which, again, I, I'd be fine with them not focusing on the Tuatha An in, in season one. So yeah. I think it's a good alternative way to to bring it in. Um, I like that idea. So, Aubrey, do you take Blood Calls Blood any differently than kind of a literal reference to this notion of the prophecy and the the, whatever? Yeah, so I I totally think it is. I I do want to take a a minute to make a couple of notes on the pacing, though. Okay. Um, I, I want everyone to keep in mind that an adaptation of The Wheel of Time to the screen has been in progress for nigh on 20 years uh and and when we're first looking at options prestige television was not a thing so what we were looking at was a two-hour movie and i think the fact that we're probably getting four hours of prestige television in eye of the world is is quite a step up from what the fans thought we were going to be getting from eye of the world for many many years so That's I want to make sure that we're level setting <laughs> expectations you, here. You just level you're, you're level setting with us. That's I awesome. I am. I am because That's realistically, good. realistically, and uh, you know, this is what we've been talking about at conventions and stuff for for years and years and years. Is how do we do Eye of the World in two hours? How do we do the Great Hunt in two hours? And I think that we're going to get eight to ten hours out of out of both of these books. But what that means is that there have been multiple script t- treatments in that time. Uh, condensing both of these books to two hours. So uh, there's been a bunch of screenwriters who have worked on it and and looked and seen, you know, this is what we can cut and this is what is what it would look like in two hours. Um, so I think the ability to add stuff back in there is really great. Um, and I I really do think that it's likely um, that at least the first season is going to be pretty condensed. And then if the reception is favorable, they can start slowing down a little bit, um, but and and expand out and give a little bit more time to it and and really uh, uh, cash in on on uh, that fandom. Uh, okay, but by the, by the realistically, way, <laughs> this whole level setting, you're like trying to like buzzkill the most exciting thing, which is like it's so it is exciting, it is exciting. Can, can. But I want to be be realistic about it and what we're probably going to get. Sure, um, sure. Everything that I'm seeing looks like we're going to get the first two books, mm-hmm. and I think that the pacing is going to go accordingly. So I think that, um, you know, the end of the Dragon Reborn, we're at the eye, we've got the big showdown super exciting stuff it's it's interspersed with fighting at tarwin's gap it's going to be really exciting um and then i do think in in blood calls blood that we're we're back in faldara mm. we're we're a little bit quieter we're getting some more of that backstory stuff that that hasn't uh we haven't had time to begin into in eye of the world with that with that really fast paced chase uh momentum that we've had built up and uh i do think that it is is more little literal toward the chapter titles in the book Okay, uh, Joe, you take it anywhere different. Uh, blood calls blood. Is it too on the nose for us to try to shift it into some other symbolic meaning? So, so this is the you know the episode title release that kind of set us off on on our yeah. episode. Yeah, uh, yeah. That we just put out and that, that we were supposed to do with a character profile, and it's just it just got right <laughs> um, So I I like what Rebecca said, and I hope it is what Rebecca said. I'm just starting to like all the pieces are just starting to line up and it, it's i think it's going we've got all these we've got alana there we've got all these other people who are, we got we've got a leandrin there in that scene uh in that episode we've got some other women cast who we think are eyes well one we know is an eyes to die and the other one they're probably all eyes to die um so i do think that this is going to be that dungeon scene i think we're going to get the uh, escape uh we're going to get the Amarlin coming in um uh and maybe that's at the end maybe we because uh, you know, the next episode is called the flame of Tarvalin. 
Um, what I want to say, though, I got uh, what Aubrey said is how usually TV shows do it the opposite when they're adapting things. Usually they stay very close to the source material early on. And then when the seasons progress, they start smashing stuff together, all like Game of Thrones and even like the Harry Potter movies, mm -hmm. right? The first few are usually pretty spot on to the books and then they start uh, falling out. So it'd be interesting if they did do it the opposite way where they condensed a lot of stuff in the beginning and then started uh, kind of going into more detail. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious just to see if they if they do smash stuff together. Yeah. Are we are they going to slow it down a little bit? I, I don't think they can because it just gets even more and more tense, and we're getting more and more point of views mm -hmm. as the books progress, and they're introducing more characters. And um, I think it's impossible, but I, I think I'm starting to accept that this is going into great. <laughs> this has been a this has been therapeutic for you. You're you're coming yeah. along. You're yeah, that's that's a that's I'm a glad good I can provide this end. service to you. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so I want to put this out. Blood calls blood is also related to Fane and it is also related mm -hmm. to Forsaken. So if we ex do extrapolate this, you it doesn't have to here. just, <laughs> right, exactly. See, you, you knowing how this game is played, right? <laughs> Everything comes back to Landfear. Everyone knows that. Daughter so of Night. no, but, but in the end, yeah, Daughter of Night's reference there, the Forsaken mm -hmm. are coming, are have their coming out party. I, I believe that Blood Calls Blood <laughs> could this could be uh, in relation to the dark prophecy and not, in other words, that's a great, if you're writing about the forsaken and coming out in this, in this, you know, at the end of this, this book and the eye of the world and the beginning of the great hunt, and you're going looking for kind of source material for a title, blood calls blood is, well, is a so great good. kind of symbolic yeah. version of yeah. that. So it doesn't have to be as much as I want this to be the dungeon scene. I absolutely believe that this could be, pre Tarwin's gap uh, or maybe the end of this is Tarwin's gap or the beginning of the next episode or whatever it is, because uh, you know, we have the flame of Tar Tarvalon, right? Mm -hmm. Or Tarvalon, sorry, however it's pronounced. Um, Rebecca, what do you think? So uh, my reading of this is this sixth episode certainly could be uh, the end and the beginning of the books. In other words, I can see mm -hmm. a five episode arc here that gets us to Tarwin's gap and, uh, and not, and then we then we meet the uh, the Amarlin, you know, shows up at the end of episode six. In other words, uh, episode six is the arrival. I can absolutely see that that this that could be the case. Versus Blood Calls Blood being a direct reference to Faldara, and you know, the, the this episode title could also be that they've made it to the White Tower, right? If you fast forwarded it, do you have yeah. a specific? What is your what's your kind of speculation now that we know we have Alana here, we have Leandrin? Yeah, you know, do you feel like uh, do you have a different kind of take on this or do you think it's just Somewhat. a natural I mean, course? I, I still come back to, even if we're just going by chapter titles, some of them are out of order. So we can't be a hundred percent assuming that those chapter titles are going to line up, right? It, even if it's just things are moved around a little bit, but we're basically following the same um, path. And then the other question that I keep kind of coming back to is if we're talking about this really rapid pace of two full books per season, um, that first episode, I'm kind of stuck on that first episode, which we almost feel certain is a slower pace. We're pretty much spending it in Emmons Field. So that would feel very different. And it's harder for me to justify how they're doing that slower pace first episode if the rest of it needs to be so fast paced. So that's where I kind of get stuck on yeah. not fully on board with that idea. Yeah. Where does it? Where does this end for you then? Uh, you know, yeah. uh, I want to ask I mean, that I do, question. I do think you know, ending somewhere into the Great Hunt. Um, you know, I, my initial thought before some of this happening was, you know, just a little of the ways into the Great Hunt where we maybe end again with the, where the horn is um, stolen, um, like a nice cliffhanger. But uh, again, if we're pushing things a little further, and if Navalis, you know, you know, maybe made a good point about they can do more in television than we might think um, that, yeah, halfway through, you know, to the portal stone, the time skip, something like that might be um, another way to go. Um, but I am firm at not going all the way to Palma in eight episodes. So. Okay. Uh, what do you think, Aubrey? Where's, where does this end for you? Episode eight. Where does where, episode eight end? Yeah. Where does the season end for you? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that it, we could definitely get all of, all of the second book. Um, wow. As much as I would love to end at the portal stones, because I think that's such a good thing. And then keeping in mind that in world that that gap is four months where they can show stuff happening in the White Tower and everything. So even when they come back, they can do an episode in between where 
um, you know, that, that you've got everybody in the White Tower and we're catching up with that and, and they can still abandon everybody in the Portal Stone world um, for four months, effectively. Um, I, I think that, that that really builds tension and builds drama if they, if they put that more, um, if, if they work more with the timing on that. Um, and I think that uh, if we've got 10 episodes, we're definitely all the way through The Great Hunt. I think with ep- hmm. eight episodes, um, it's questionable. I, th- it depends on how much they want to draw out that chase. Yeah, I, I, th- there's so many good spots nearing mm-hmm. the end of The Great Hunt where you could do this, right? Uh, Egwene yep. being collared. Uh, I love the yeah. idea of... Of the, I love the idea of our main characters having gone missing in essence, right. you know, like random. Yeah. Ma- they're just yeah. gone. No they're one knows, and, and and no one knows. I love the idea of the season yeah. two. Even maybe season two ends with them showing back up, and it's like, and Egwene's and, and all these things. Yeah. And now what? And now what happens? And that's yeah. that's the cliffhanger uh, moment. Joe, where's where's this going for you now? With all the news we got this week, with you know, we know Alana, we know she's going to show up. We know all these Aes Sedai are now kind of coming into play here. We haven't heard anything as a review all about Camelin. We're getting, you know, the Turkish bath references and, you know, <laughs> some rumors and, and, and such. And we're seeing that more and more people are kind of making their way to Prague to do, you know, to jump into some of these scenes that obviously include and, and, and necessitate more named characters. What is this telling you? Like, where are you at? Like, where are you speculating the season's going to end? So I had always hoped that it would end, and I thought it was reasonable to end exactly how Rebecca said with the uh, horn being stolen. I think that's an awesome cliffhanger ending, um, and that goes mm-hmm. that's pretty that goes pretty far into the Great Hunt. That's like the first quarter or so of the Great Hunt they could get into. But now I'm thinking it's going to be. I hope they don't go to Fama. I I don't understand how they could cram all of the great like. Mm-hmm. Obviously they're going to cut stuff, but I'm trying to imagine what they're going to cut if they're going to go all the way to Fama, like would probably have to cut portal stone um, oh no yeah <laughs> i don't agree you've got, yeah. you've got Kyrie and you've got the whole white <laughs> you've got the the white tower and the john chen storyline it yeah, seems like, like too much to cram into especially if the pacing is going like this where with mm-hmm. episode six is going to be flame of tar Valen, and we think that's either the uh, amelin arriving in fall tower or maybe the the girls getting to the white tower yeah. I, I don't see how you're going to cram then everything else in two episodes mm-hmm. all in the fall. I right. think it's impossible. So you I certainly can have end up like right, like around. I think mm-hmm. the cliffhanger, like you said, Elaine getting captured. That whole scene where they, uh, where the engine takes them through um, the ways, and then they come out and there's the attack uh, with John Chen and Nynaeve and Elaine escape. I think that'd be a great spot for an ending. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there are, you know, if you think about a mid season finale, and it just depends if they're going to release these, you know, every, you know, once a week in essence, or mm-hmm. if they're going to give them to us all at one time, but a mid season Tarwin's gap does make for a great kind of conclusion to kind of mm-hmm. midway through. And you'd want it something as big, but I hate hitting, honestly, I just hate hitting Fama at the, at the end, just yeah. for the fact that I want more depth from the great hunt, mm-hmm. but I hear what you're saying, Aubrey, which is, mm-hmm. They can do it in the mm-hmm. sense of, you know, if they were trying to make these into movies or they were trying to like cut things out and they got down to two hours per book, then this would yep. give us at least four hours per book. And th- that question came up on chat. Uh, sorry to those in chat. You know, there's been this has been going crazy. I haven't been able to pull your comments in as much. The question of the, if these episodes are 60 minutes each, mm-hmm. I believe I want to say two things there. I, I think it's it's unconfirmed in the sense of I don't think Rafe has said those words. But I think it's believed to be 60 minutes per episode. And I thought maybe Redonian Intelligence, they saw eight episodes. And I thought, well, I mean, I might be wrong in thinking they also had the length of the episodes. But I think the the belief right now is 60 minutes. So four hours per book, I wouldn't like it. Uh, I would. I, this is the funniest part. I would rather five, you know, or six. You know, gotta, <laughs> I'm quibbling. I'm quibbling here. We're getting the wheel of time on television. So uh, that's right. That's uh, that, that's kind of silly on my part. Uh, before I let you all go, you've been wonderful, by the way. Thank you very much uh, for sticking around for this hour and a half uh, and and chatting through kind of all of the stuff that this is bringing to <laughs> bringing to bear. Mm-hmm. I don't know that we. Uh, that we've come to any other conclusion other than I think all of us are on the ta- on the on the same page. We are likely into the great hunt and possibly deeper than we, into the great hunt than we thought we were going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what this news has kind of shifted, at least my mindset. I always thought, you know, maybe we'd get to the dungeon scene, you know, maybe maybe at the furthest we'd get to maybe the portal stones ever. Now this has pushed me to. <laughs> 
This is pushing me to accept. <laughs> I may be wrong and we might be going to fall me. Um, but any last statement, any last speculation you want to share with the crowd before we let them go tonight? Uh, we'll start with, uh, with you, Joe. Is there anything else uh, that was come, came to mind when we were chatting where it was an idea you want to share? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we won't know anything further until we get those last two episode titles. Um, I was kind of curious as to who people think that the so some of the new people that were announced in the cast, like Donald McCormack, we knew he was in it, but we don't know who he's playing. Uh, Maria Doyle Kennedy, and we don't know at all who she's playing, and we know Jennifer Chia Garcia is going to likely in it. I should die. We mentioned that there's most likely going to be new spring flashbacks. So here's my question. Um, if we do flashbacks, are we going to get the same actresses playing Moraine and Thuan of, of, the, of Rosamond and whoever is going to play them? Um, or are they going to get other actresses to play young versions? Oh, sheesh. There's a, yeah. <laughs> so the great thing about Aes Sedai is that they can yeah. cast anyone from ages 20 to 50 or, yeah. you know, because you're, you're supposed to not be able to, to, to be able to find an age on them. So I see no reason for them to cast different actresses. Yeah. I would hope they would spring. use the same ones. So, you know. Yeah. yeah uh, yep. uh, to that question, Rebecca, as far as Dale McCormick, uh, do you have kind of in mind, is there somebody that you're thinking that um, he's going to play? He is a really tough one. Um, the best thing that I can still come up with that seems possible to me is that he's a Shamael only because he would work well as he looks as Moradin and they would obviously make him up to look very different as a Shamael so if they wanted to Ooh. use a yeah. the same actor and make him look very different as a Shamael and then look more like himself as Moradin I mean that would make That's sense. Like that. that would make sense. I that was that that thought came to mind too. Like wh who could be playing and why wouldn't they announce him? I I, I do like that idea. I like mm -hmm. the idea that they would they'd make up him up a little bit. You wouldn't you yeah. know you he can he can voice like the himself. character. Yeah, he mm -hmm. can voice the character. Yeah. He made lots of CGI at first, and then when we get him as Morden mm -hmm. later, uh, he definitely has a three three episodes mm -hmm. there. Would a Shamael be in three episodes through episode six? It's possible for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyone else have a different thought there yeah. for Daryl? Uh, uh, Joe. Yeah. Aubrey, Intar. Ingtar, because I'm all in on the Great Hunt. Ingtar, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, any of those, right? Any of those kind of key yeah. figures in Faldara, this could... Or Huron could be another one. But it is an early one. We're, 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 at least we're led to believe he was maybe part of episode one or two, maybe two. Um, would mm, we see yeah. it? That's what uh, he might need more episodes in the back half if he was one of those. Yeah, if he's characters. if he's in if he's in episode two, then I think Ishamael is a great guess, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. especially because of all the dream sequences and stuff that show up. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. so I think that's probably a good. Did you had did Joe before you uh, move on? Do you want to say did you have somebody that, for Daryl that you you were kind of speculating um, about? Originally, when we first found out he was going to be in it, I thought either maybe Aram or Galad. Um, but uh, to be honest with you, um, Ishmael was my other choice. I thought he would be perfect for him, especially as M Morden, because Morden's supposed to be a much younger guy. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought he. I mean, I've never seen Peaky Blinders, but I hear he's really good in it. So. Yes, yes. Now, su super awesomeosity. Uh, I'm getting so much better at saying that in chat is uh, <laughs> saying that they said that he was playing opposite Moraine when they announced him. Uh, yeah. And so that's that does bring the question. I mean, I guess just depending on whoever wrote that and what they meant by that, I guess <laughs> a Shamael maybe could fit in there. Um, yeah, it's an interesting, uh, you know, and this comes back, you know, maybe Rafe's adding a new character. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we'll see any new ones. Uh, Dorothy added a new character, right? Leila Ibarra, right? Oh, yes, Leila. Uh, <laughs> I love the theories that she's not that, you know, anyways. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the speculation around her that she's actually someone else, and they, they, yeah. they did. I, I'm, I would, uh, this is at least coming to me now uh, as far as, at first I didn't think that they were kind of not playing with us, but, you know, having fun with us as fans. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder if that's, that's going to transform as the year goes on where, um, you know, where they'll purposely kind of leak something. I don't know. I don't know if that's their, their MO or not, uh, because it does seem like now they know that it's happening and playing yeah. along might be kind of fun yeah. with the fans. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Aubrey, and Aubrey, did you have something, uh, just a thought, any speculation before we let our fans uh, go tonight? Is there something... Last so thought. I'm going to call it because we didn't talk about episode six, the flame of Tarvalon. Yeah. That one is where they're going to disappear into the portal stones. That's it. They're going to kick off the hunt. And uh, that I think that's a good end point for that. Assuming that we get all of the great hunt. And why would you, why do you assume that with that? In other words, what about the title uh, name itself? Is I, because I for you? think that, uh, the flame of Tarvalon will be from at the point where Rand gets summoned by the Omberland, put in charge of the hunt, and start they start heading out. 
And I think in 60 minutes, they can get from there to uh, first portal stone encounter. Okay. And do you think then the rest will make it to the White Tower? In other words, do you think it's we're going to end there with uh-huh. the White Tower, kind of them entering in? We're going to finally get into the White Tower here? Is that the idea? Uh, I don't necessarily think they get to the White Tower, but I think that they will start on the journey to the White Tower. Um, and But I do think that that's the, that's the portal stone disappearance cliffhanger bit. Okay. Um, and Rebecca, was there a last parting thought for us, our last parting speculation that you had before we, uh, before we say goodnight? My only thought is still just, you know, questioning how we fit in potentially some of these extra things like, you know, that, that aren't on the page, right? We know some of that's going to happen. I don't think we've necessarily fully given that thought when we talk about yeah. condensing, you know, we're, we're keeping in mind that some things are going to be expanding and added. But that's maybe a conversation that goes further than what. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. We should definitely. I'd love to have that conversation. But uh, in other words, we've just talked about how they could fast forward all these things. Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. point you're bringing up is, you know, we ever see Tyr? Do we ever see any of these other cities? And do we ever see uh, the politics and you know, and characters from those locations and what's going on? In other words, mm-hmm. are we going to get more of that than we think we are? Um, and that we even have any concept of at this point? And because I, I believe that Rafe will give us lots of off page kind of scenes where we just hear of a place, but he wants to give mm-hmm. some texture and some color mm-hmm. to it. Uh, is my guess. So yeah, that's, you're, you're right. That's a, probably a whole nother episode. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to thank all of you that have watched us tonight and called in and participated with us in chat and to, to the three of you, Joe, uh, your show's awesome. Thank you very much Thanks. for jumping in and being willing to kind of jump on the call. Uh, we'll for, uh, yeah, we're going to have you and, and your crew back here. We'll figure out a time and yeah. uh, do a little interview with everybody. I want to get to know a little bit more about you and and uh, and and find out what, what you know what your plans are for the show and you know why you guys got into this and where your fandom began. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, really appreciate forward. you being on. And Aubrey, as always, you know, uh, really appreciate <laughs> really <laughs> jumping in and hopefully we'll sure. see you at Jordan Con, of course. Absolutely. And, uh, and where we'll do a lot more of this. Uh, I'm hopeful to bring a little Couch Con. Uh, dusty wheel moment uh, over there and uh, for and, sure and do some live interviewing of some people and, and have some fun chats there. So I really yeah, appreciate you Yeah, If in. y'all have enjoyed Matt and I arguing with each other, uh, <laughs> please come to Jordan Con April 17th and 19th. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And it's all this for three days. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. And like I told everybody last week, if you want, I'll talk to you all about the metaphysics of the wheel of time well into the, well into the morning on Thursday night. So. <laughs> well, that's true. Um, and Rebecca, last but not least, thank you so much for for uh, for being here, Rebecca's for those who are watching. Rebecca's gonna be back with us. In, I think it's the 18th. I don't know. It's a couple weeks into February. Yep, couple weeks. She's yep. gonna be doing maybe it's earlier than that, 15th or something. Like that. Either way, it's gonna be the second Wednesday. I think we're doing a live adaptation together. I think yep. uh, Rebecca's gonna bring her live adaptation chops in, and and actually we're in the Great Hunt, so we're gonna have a lot of yeah. fun there because Perfect. we'll be talking yep. a lot about this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, please go follow both of these channels uh listen to and watch their content they're awesome and yep. again to everyone that called really appreciate you guys uh you know taking the time out tonight so as i like to say good night from the dusty wheel and smash the black <laughs>